Well, the centenary test match was one of the best matches that I ever played in. Um, Tony Gregg captains England, Greg Chappell captains Australia. And there were some amazing elements to the game. It was like a soap opera. But in the dressing room, there was also a lot going on. The best talent in Australian cricket was being signed up for World Series cricket you know, by Kerry Packer through the agency of a guy named Austin Robinson. And then the match itself unfolded. We were bowled out for 138, I think, in the first innings. And what I remember about that was was Rick McCosker going down, got hit in the side of the jaw at just under 160 kilometres an hour, broken in three parts, and the ball drops onto the off stump. I mean, he's out as well. That's got to really, really hurt. So many Englishmen in our dressing room. How are you, Dennis and Maxie and Dougie? It was, it was almost sickening, actually. Yeah, but the next day we bowled them out for 95. Couldn't have happened to a nicer bunch of blokes, could it? And then, you know, the batting took over. There were two totals of around 400 late in the last day. Dennis Early hits Alan Knott just below <clears throat> the roll on the pads out LBW in a really beautiful orange light. Earlier on at tea time we'd met the Queen. You can imagine her travelling all the way from one side of the, the planet to the other to see the English victory come a hell of a long way for nothing really. But it was during that time that um, yeah, you'd introduce the Queen, Greg would say, Your Royal Highness, I'd like you to meet um, Ian Davis. Ian Davis, Your Royal Highness. Yeah, Kerry O'Keefe. <laughs> he was like, that. Lily had the audacity to ask the Queen of England for her autograph. Can you imagine that? The Queen doesn't sign autographs. And yet here we were, uh, two months later, Dennis gets the 10 by 8 photograph. Dear Dennis, love Liz, couple of kisses. They had so much in there. But the courage of McCosker, taken from the ground and against doctor's orders, um, two and a bit days later, he goes back out to bat. Albeit Kerry O'Keefe opened the batting, a uh, bit of trivia there, and did all right, batted for an hour, but then later on McCosker came out, his head bandaged up around this way and around that way with the green baggy on. Now, as he walked down towards the gate onto the hallowed turf of the MCG, our players pulled back the sliding glass window and listened to this amazing noise as he walked into the centre wicket area it was Walsy McCosker Walsy McCosker it was just a hair on the back of my neck stood up most people that were at the game would never forget that moment didn't take long for the bouncer Rick up on the toes crashed it behind square leg and didn't make many but together with Marshy they made a partnership around about 30 odd runs consider we won the match by 45 exactly the same margin as in the first encounter between England and Australia 100 years before when Charlie Bannerman led our team out into the middle of the MCG. But later on in the dressing room, Doug Walters is trying to make Rick McCosker laugh. He's got a mouthful of piano wire. He's sucking champagne through a straw. It's not, not a good look. And he said, well, boys, it just goes to show you in 100 years of test cricket, the Poms haven't improved one bloody run, have they? And of course, yeah, there was so much. Marashi scores the first 100 for an Australian wicketkeeper, 110 not out. Left me stranded on eight not out. Another 50 nipped in the bud. Um, but so many moments in there. Yeah, Kerry O'Keefe bowled some great um, leg spin in the second innings and uh, Gary Cozier took an, an amazing um, catch. It, it was one of those absolutely ripping matches and it was there to celebrate 100 years of the greatest game of all, which is cricket.